the coding family. How's it going? How's it going? Let me see if you guys can hear and see me yet. Looks like we've got eight people on and already four likes. You guys are awesome. Aisha, awesome, yay. Hello, JJ. Hey, Go Kart. Hey, Tasha. Kelly wanted to pop in and say she took her CPC exam today from home and passed it. It was a bit stressful because the lady was kind of not nice, so it made it more stressful. Yes, that can very much so happen. Some people are having a really bad day when they uh, get online in a Zoom with you, and there's nothing you can do to make them happy. Her time is 9.30. I'm in Florida and would be 10.30 or 11.30 my time. I'm not sure where Jen is at. I'm in Arizona. Usually if it's 9.30, I'm either 6.30 my time, I think, is usually 8.30 or 9.30, um, y'all's term. It never starts, I don't think, at 10.30 or 11.30, unless you're outside the United States. I know you're so glad it's over. I know you are. Kelly, was there any questions on there that you absolutely had no idea you were going to look for or could have been on there? Like, I had somebody ask about an NCCI edit trying to figure out what the answer to that code was and they weren't prepared for it because it wasn't a question on any of the uh, practice exam questions or one that I had ever gone over or was everything pretty much what I said it was going to be. Just curious. Just don't let your certification lapse. Keep your membership paid and you won't have to worry about that darn exam anymore. When you do retire uh, from the medical field there is a retirement um, thing that you can apply for and they will keep your certification valid but you don't have to pay for the memberships anymore or something I'm not sure but don't forget about that part guys um, later on down the road you definitely don't want it to expire what if you want to come back out of retirement and go back to work for some reason um, you want to keep your certification up to date, so. Coaching softball, oh, awesome. She tests on the 25th. She said she took it at home. Yay, I'm so glad you're here. Hello from India. She was going to stop the whole thing because I wasn't fanning my patient pages the way she wanted. It was hard to do. It is hard to do. I told you with all those tabs on there, you got to take those tabs. There's no reason to tab your book for sure. It is a pain. And um, yeah, fanning the pages is, and plus getting your book in the camera view and fanning it 
when you're trying to look at the camera on your screen, but then hold it where they want it to, and it's kind of in reverse. Every time you walk towards the camera, it goes out of focus in the opposite direction or something. I don't know. It's really difficult. That is a very challenging um, part of the exam for sure. You take yours on May 3rd. Very nervous. It's normal. Normal to be very, very nervous. But I was down before three hours, so I went back and just made sure I did everything okay from the beginning. Good. I hope you didn't change any answers. Three hours is a perfect, perfect sweet spot. No more than three hours and 20 minutes. You don't want to run the whole four hours because um, most of the time if you do that, you're reading too much and you're going to get too much wrong. Three hours is great time. Perfect. Yes. Um, I can try to show you guys how they're going to want it done. Oh, good. Can you hear now? Go kart. Yes, 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 yes. I hope so. Let's see. Go to see to video. I got my tea all in the way. Uh, cell phones. Oop, camera is not working. Hold on. Let me delete this sucker. Delete. And video capture. There we are. Okay. And let's see. Miss Magpie. Sorry, she's she's upside down probably to you guys. Oops, the camera died again. Hold on. You're sitting on our books, my honey child. You're gonna have to move. Um add video capture. Why is it upside down? Configure video. Why are you upside down? I don't know why it's upside down, but anyway, um, when you're fanning the books, they're going to want to see them like this, long ways, not short, not like this, but long ways, and you're going to start in the back of the book, uh, on the bottom of the book, and you're going to fan it one page at a time in the whole screen. You can see I'm not getting it all in the whole screen. They're going to want to see it like that. A little bit like that. And then you have to take and hold the whole, the, the spine and shape it too. But you've got to do it where they can see it all. But you start at the back of the book and fan them out like that. So it's kind of difficult. It's kind of difficult to do because you're holding it up in the air on your fingertips while you're trying to fan it. And these books are heavy as crap to hold up on your fingertips. So it's a, it's a task. You guys got to got to figure out. Let me see if I can't get this camera to work a little better. I don't know why Miss Magpie is right there. Ugh. So you're going to hold it on the bottom, but then you got to start fanning it on the bottom. This is oop, wrong way. This is the way they had me do it. And then you gotta shake it. Ugh. And it's heavy. It's hard to do. That book is heavy, so it's not the easiest thing to do. I can't remember which way is forward, which way is backwards. And you 
can't have any open windows. And they pretty much want to see every page and make sure you don't have anything inside it. No added pieces of paper. That's all they're looking for is added pieces of paper. They don't care if you've written all in them. They just um, don't want any added pieces of paper. And it's just hard. Hard to do. Does that look about similar like what you had to do? Yeah, I had to pull my hair back. They made me put my hair up in a ponytail, and I'm not a ponytail kind of girl either. <clears throat> Hello. Oh, what is it? I put that right there. Hey, Carmen. Good to see you. I haven't seen you in a little while. You take yours April 20th? Kelly, so E&M wasn't bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm not sure what my score was. I'll go check. I'll go look. Good. I love to go see your back, your um, individual scores in each um, of your categories. That'd be great. I took a ton of time putting all my ABC, ABC test questions and answers in the book and none of them were in it honestly it was would have taken more time to look those instead of just knowing what about the study guide did you happen to have the study guide I heard there's three questions in the study guide that are on the exam but I know you're happy that it's over with yeah that's magpie isn't she beautiful she has the best colorings ever um, some lady came into my house while no one was home come in the front door and dropped her off in a cat carrier <laughs> true story and she is the tiniest cat that I do have actually she just looks big on the camera yes they want to see all your face they have to see the side of your face your cheeks chin um, that kind of stuff so they can tell if your mouth is moving and you're talking to somebody else a bit of a language barrier yep I just nodded my head <laughs> Oh no, Spicy Mama, don't get discouraged. Hello, Marshall. She had me put it down on the table and fan, and slowly fan it. Ah. Yep, they look at the bottom of the keyboard. Yep, yep, yep. It's funny, isn't it? Um, yeah, they want to, they have to see the side of your face the whole time. That includes your jawline so if your hair drapes down over your jawline your cheek then you need to have it up because they have to verify that your mouth is not moving the entire exam um, because of people talking to other people and trying to get answers or something I guess And she didn't like it that way. So we did it on the table. Okay. Tanya, um, I did not prep any questions for tonight. Um, I've, it's been really busy. I had to work work today on the real job. Um, I have, um, what do I have up tonight? I have, uh, oh, we're going to go here and we're going to go to here. I have pocket prep up and I have, um, 
160 more questions I haven't even looked at on Pocket Prep. We went over some last night on TikTok, and they were really good questions. So I figured we'd just go on and continue here because I did not have time to prep you guys any questions. But I do have... Um, another thing we can do first which is our labeling of the lymphatic and immune system if you guys wanted to do that um, what areas are able to uh, label in the um, lymphatic and immune system so which ones would be adenoids which ones would be lymph nodes which ones would be tonsils and thymus those kind of things and then we can do the pocket prep questions um, don't forget this Sunday is going to be a workshop um, and it's completely free it's two o'clock on Sunday and I'm doing my best to create a workshop that will have the most current ideations, whatever you want to call it, that could be on the exam right now. So like um, breast removal with blue dye or um, the autopsy of a stillborn, things that uh, the emotional reaction or um, the adverse reactions, some of the things that, that I've seen online of people saying that were areas of study like um, cardiac stress test, the 930, 15, and 16, um, the NCCI edits for what modifier would be um, the direct approval thing um, how soon after um, a provider sees a patient must their chart be completed um, the differences between a 203 or a 204 in E&M when you don't have MDM or time um, ambulance ACL repairs in the knee um, wheelchair some other things that people I've seen over the internet say were um, there sorry I'm unloading on here you Kelly you unload all you want every little snippet of information is super helpful because I wouldn't have known to show people how to fan their books if you hadn't have told me. And that's, again, something I can go over on Sunday, too. So unload, girl, all you want. Were there any surprised questions? Hey, Lori, you took your test today, too, and you're still waiting on results? Oh, my. Yours must have got paused, and it's being manually audited by a real person then. Very interesting. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Lori, best of luck. Oh my gosh, I hope you passed. My advice to anyone that hasn't taken it yet, breathe. You got this. And just keep doing these videos. Yep. Yep. You gotta keep re being repetitive. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Good evening, everyone. Hey, Katie. See, that's why I think it's better for me to do it in a testing site, hoping to avoid these things. You will not avoid these things at a testing site. There is nobody at the testing site that is going to replace your online Zoom proctor. You're still going to have an online Zoom proctor. You're just using somebody else's computer and webcam and internet. It's still going to be the same exact thing. 
You're still going to have an online proctor who you're going to get online with Zoom. You're still going to fan out the books. You're still going to have the same issues, communication, what have you. It's, it's, there's no real difference except for if the internet goes down, power cuts off, it's not your fault, and they will give you a repeat test attempt if a catastrophe like that happens. If you're at home and your internet goes down or your power gets cut off or you know somebody hits a light pole, then you don't get to take the test again. So that's the only difference. You're still going to have the same issues that she's talking about today. Uh, Blondie, first test I could have my peppermint candy on the second try. They would not let me. It was so frustrating. Oh, goodness. Yep, you never know what you're going to get. An essential oil diffuser. Good job. Kelly. <clears throat> Were you able to go back and look over your test? Yes, you are. Absolutely. Um, the last 10 cases that are at the end of the exam, I had one person say, this was before they revised the exam too, so it may not lo no longer be that issue, but if the exam says, okay, you just finished the first 90 and you're going into the big cases, the next 10, are you ready to proceed? Go back and look at the previous 90 and do any edits then before you go into the last 10 cases because it would not allow her to go back once she entered in that other group of questions that were the last 10 questions at the end. These questions on the online exam are grouped. They'll give you, okay, here's your six integumentary, here's your six muscular skeletal, those kind of things. So they're grouped in bundles. Just before you go into the last 10 cases, make sure you've gone back and looked over all those questions. I don't know why she wasn't able to go over it um, and go backwards. Um, after she entered in those cases, but I don't know, she may have run out of time, but that's the only person that I've heard who was not uh, able to do that. No, you don't need to register at all. It is already up on uh, YouTube. Um, let's see. Medical coding by Jen. If we go there and we go to my YouTube channel, where's the YouTube? Is that it? There's YouTube. Go to YouTube and scoochy down, it's right there. And you can register if you want it to, kinda. Just hit the notify me and it'll turn the notifications on your phone to let you know when I go live. But it's 2 o'clock this Sunday. I've already got it up. I put the picture of the heart up so that that would kind of alert you. But um, the link is already there. It's ready for you guys to just join me. It's my birthday too, so I hope to see you guys there. Come spend Sunday with me. We're going to do 75 questions in three hours. <laughs> Thank you, Maisha. Jen, I don't see any workshop on your website. That's right. There's no workshop because I'm not charging for it. I thought about putting one up and then posting it for free. People could just log on and register for it. But then, I don't know. That just kind of makes it where, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't have time to figure out how to go on my website and also not charge for it. But then, also I didn't want it to feel like I'm just trying to gather everybody's email addresses. You know, because you have to... If you're going to do anything on my website, pretty much you have to put your email address in. So I just left it 
as an open link on YouTube. So I thought it would, might be easier for you guys. I can actually give y'all the link here too. Let's see. Right? I think I can. Uh, yeah, share. I can copy the link and then I can put it into chat actually. There you go. Plan on taking your CPC in May. Would you please let me know what to expect? You're really nervous. Yes, absolutely. Sunday will be a perfect example of exactly what to expect. Um, I'm going to do three hours and 75 questions in the same pace as the exam. So if you can uh, join me Sunday or even watch the replay whenever you want to because the video will stay free forever. It's my birthday present for you to you guys. Um, that one video will show you. And if you could just follow along with me bring all three of your books and try to run to the codes just as fast as I do and see if you can't come up with the same answer that I do in the hundred and twenty seconds per question that I do um, if you do it in tandem with me you'll know exactly what it's gonna feel like to do one of those certifications exams Yeah, me too, Kelly. Me too, Kelly. Yeah, no dining room. Do not have your exam being um, done in your dining room unless your dining room has four walls and you can close doors to it. Um, maybe some of the ones in New York City, those houses had formal dining rooms that you could cut, shut the doors to, but not a lot of people have that kind of stuff. If you have an open concept home with your living room, dining room, kitchen area, all one big room. You can't have your exam in that room. You need to go find a uh, walk-in closet, um, a um, bedroom, doesn't matter, anything. Anything with four walls. And don't do it cubicles at work. Cubicles at work will not work because they do not go from floor to ceiling walls took mine at a center and the person at the center checked my pockets and books and there was no online proctor FYI Marissa says that that is crazy never heard of such thing was it for AAPC's or was it for AHEMA's as long as you do what they ask and just focus on the end goal you'll be fine yeah six other people around you and they ask for noise cancellation if they won't let you wear headphones I was there in class It did have a timer at the top and told me how much time I had passed, etc. Good job. There's also a tab that you can let you know what sections, yep, and how many questions, yep, perfect. I had a question on the order of blood flow through the heart. So did I, Kelly. So did I. I think mine was ventricular was the answer. I've almost caught up with all you, you guys' messages. Uh, let me get back here to our thing that we were working on. What's our first answer for this first body part up here near her eye and sinuses area? Do you guys know what goes over there? There's also a tab. Okay, good. And one question about blood flow through the heart. Text right off by you tackling it. Jen registered for McCary and sold one item already. 
my funding for my next exam. Miss Livingston, you rock. Good job. My um, my page on McCary is Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> if you let me know, message me what your um, account name is. I'll go like all your stuff and put it in my shopping cart, which seems to push out uh, alerts to other people that might be liking or have hearted your items and it'll tell them "Uh oh you better hurry up and purchase this because somebody's put it in their shopping cart so it'll nudge them to hurry up and buy it so email me your sh store name if you want to and then I'll run to your account and put all your stuff in my shopping cart <laughs> Uh, don't forget to have your ID yet with your current name on it. Yes, and don't forget to bring your um, AAPC ID number. Where do you find your score? So we're going to go to AAPC. Whoops, PC dot com. I can get there. Uh, AAPC. Of course, you're going to log on. You're going to go up here. I don't know if it's going to show anything. Uh, so let's go to your exams and courses right there. And then you're going to scoochie down, pick your exam, pick your view score, and then you can see your score and how well you did. And if you want to purchase more exam questions based off what you failed, if you did fail or pass, whatever, you can purchase more exam questions down there. But that is where they have the scores. It's under courses and exams. And then you have to click on the the actual like city or whatever that you took it in, which is silly since you took it online. Did you guys tell me what goes there? You found it? Good, 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 good. You took your passport? You only need one form. Yeah, driver's license. Yeah, that kind of thing. Anybody know what goes up here? Is this adenoids or is this tonsils up here in this first one? Or are we a thalamus or is that a lymph node? What is that that they're pointing at right there? I don't think it's bone marrow or spleen. Could be a lymph vessel. What is that? yellow thing right there. What do you guys think? Hey Mabel, good to see you. And then they got this other thing down here near the mouth. Uh, what do you think that is? Hey Julie, this bone marrow, I bet that's what's down here in the thigh, right? We can at least plan that. And I know the butterfly thing right there, they even have it labeled right there. That thing has to be your thalamus, right? So up here in your face, you have tonsils and adenoids. Which ones are on top? Tonsils or adenoids? Yeah, let's do adenoids and let's do tonsils and then 
What are they pointing to right here? We've got lymph nodes, lymph vessels, or a vein. Lymph nodes, lymph vein, lymph vessels. That'll be what this green stuff is that they're pointing at throughout the body. That little livery looking thing over here, I bet that's the spleen. That's easy right there. Yeah. All right, so the worst part of it is knowing the differences between lymph nodes, lymph ducts and veins, and lymph vessels. So I always think of armpits as lymph nodes, right? And this is sort of in the shoulder area. I don't know. Then we got down here on the bottom, on the top of the thigh, they have a pointing towards a lymph node too here. They're saying that one in the top of the thigh is a lymph node, but they're pointing below it for the box. So I still think lymph node is here, even though it's shoulder kind of, but I bet that's lymph node. Then which one is a vein and which one is a vessel or a lymph duct? And the one in the leg seems straighter and is all in similar shape, whereas the one in the neck up here seems lumpy dumpy. So maybe that's the lymphatic ducts. So let's put that there and put lymph vessel down here and see if this is correct. Yep, that's right. Hey, Twinkle, you still at work? So you guys can screenshot this and you can add these labels to things. There is a... Um, a lymphatic and immune system picture in your ICD-10 book. Um, if you don't know that that page is there, it is there. And uh, I have notes on that too somewhere. I think I added them to that big old dump of. Um, 500 things or, or that big old bundle of uh, stuff up for sale. Oh, that's not working again either. Again, delete. Yes, and then we'll add this video, video capture. Yeah. So this picture in your um, ICD-10 book, um, great place to add any kind of lymphatic um, information on the hormone page, endocrine page. I like putting a bunch of notes there. And I have that copied in that big bundle that I have on the website now that's got a nightmare of all my documents in it. Let's see. Where am I going? I'm going to pocket prep. Huh. And let's turn this one off. Yes, there we go. We are dealing with uh, Sanchez here. And our four, four, 700 codes maybe? Or we have 499. We have every single answer has the 49904 or 05 in it. The A is the only one that is different that has does not have the 49904 in it. All the other ones do, but A doesn't. So that's intriguing.
So she had on her exam, she told us a question, and that tidbit is so helpful. Something about the direction of what? What did she say? I had one question about the order of blood flow through the heart. Mama, I'm going to can't uh, copy that, and I'm going to work on that for our Sunday workshop. See if I can't find a question with that on it. Paste. There we go. Uh, if I can't find one, I'll make a question for it. Terry, let me know if there's anything else I can help you with. I took my testing center, the lady checked me in the monitor behind her and asked her if I was the only one and there were three others. Oh wow. Lady never touched or had me go through the CPT books. That's great. And let you have peppermints and your pink fingertip thing too. Oh wow. And I have longer hair and they didn't make you put it up. Wow. They gave me two pieces of paper and a pencil and let you, ooh, I would have been writing down every code that was on the exam. Oh my Lord. I can't believe they gave you a pencil and two pieces of paper. I would have written and you were, and they were talking to you. Oh my gosh. You were in Kentucky. is CPS anesthesia section is all the modifiers that apply to that section it will save time yes move all of those anesthesia modifiers out of your hip picks book and put them you know there's only four questions in anesthesia but they're hard-hitting ones because they're gonna hit you with a couple of modifiers per answer You took your exam today too, Robin? Three of you guys. You think it could go either way? Oh, bless your heart, Robin. I hope you passed. CPC, okay. No worries. CPT. Huh. I know your head is spinning, Kelly. Don't worry about it. Everybody saying D on this one? Really? Y'all are picking the 499? Why would it not be A? What's going on? 447. I haven't looked up the codes yet. 447. That's the barrier with the mesh. And 499. That seems like an add on code. Just by the number, I don't know if it is or not. 499, 49904, no, 04 is that. Okay, that's an omega and it's extra. Are we extra there? We're secondary though, is that? Are we secondary? No. Uh, 04 is extra. And that's extra too. Okay, extra O flap. Yep, yep, yep. We harvested and transferred. And we got a parenthetical that says it includes the harvest and the transfer. If we did it with two surgeons, we could add the 62 modifier with it. Okay. Good job, guys. Y'all did it. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. What about this one? Are we 
a level two, a level three, or a level four, if we have somebody here with strep throat. Good job, Maisha. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you, guys. Let me check. Sorry, I have to check. We got 44 on and 26 likes. Awesome. Love it. All right, let me give out some memberships. Be sure and type into chat what you think the answer is. It might give you a free membership for chatting in chat. Let me send YouTube $26.85 and then they will give away five YouTube memberships. Mm -hmm. Robin, <laughs> Edith, Katie, Bethany, and Little Cat. Congratulations. I hope those memberships help. You now have access to exclusive content on my YouTube channel, which um, has all my old workshops, my old duck classes, um, my individual CPT code or ICD-10 or guideline book prep videos, the podcast, all kinds of stuff. I have gotten level questions wrong. Me too. Hey, Libra. You're just on time. We've only done one question, I think. We did a matchy match on um, the lymph node system, lymphatic system, where we matched some body parts up. Other than that, this is our second or third question, so no worries. You've been a member for a year and a half. You have, Love Muffin. Actually, you really have. Isn't that awesome? Thank you so much, really, for the you the contribution to the content. It not only keeps me motivated, but it helps the family too to, you know, I'll leave her alone. She's creating content, you know. Love Muffins paid her, you know, for a whole year to um, create content for the group. So it's, it's awesome. Thank you so much. I know YouTube takes half, but I do get half. So, and they pay me once a month around the 20th, and that's a whole year of contribution. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Yay! Everybody saying B. We're going severe with this one. We're going four because the patient has otitis media with infusion too. Probably. Good job. Good job. You'd think strep throat. It would be easy. Remember, these are the codes. You cannot do the um, looking for um, similarities irregularities you can look for but I don't see any right now um, but you can't do the process of elimination with these particular codes you have to find what you removed from the leg and do a word search through the descriptors of all these codes and find it and then code it so let me know what you think the answer is for this one these codes will be on your exam Kelly and the uh, other ones, which body part did y'all have to do with these codes today? Lori, who else? There's quite a few, you guys. Robin, Kelly, Robin, and Lori, what body part did y'all have to do? I'm glad. Go kart. Uh oh. Now you have 600 cases to do on Practico to remove your A. Kelly, don't worry. They're all on uh, Quizlet. Um, plus, um, a lot of times you can just take the first couple of sentences 
uh, even the first sentence in each one of those cases, just drop it into Google search and you'll find the answer. Somebody's got it posted somewhere. So don't stress too much, but do use it as a learning process. It's totally different from the course because you have to take health insurance information into account. So it will be something totally different, yes. So don't stress, the answers are there, but do use it to help you, help you learn for sure. Everybody saying B? Perfect. I don't really agree with this one. I really think that, I don't know, I'd flip these around. I put the four in the back and the five in the front because it was a bigger, bigger item than this one, but I'm not going to be picky about the question. All right. With this one, we've got two with the same answer and one of them has radiology being added to it. So that's what I would go to first is B and C. See if radiology is already included in this one. Make sure I'm under that right header. Travis had cheer tryouts today. I hope it went well. He should be coming home soon. I got somebody bringing him home so I wouldn't start the live late. Three, two, five, 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 five. I think this question, this code is on the exam. Um, three, two, five, five, two, four, five, and seven were all on somebody's exam at some point. So this is a really good area to study in. Yes, for sure we need to learn how to, from the program also, not just the books, yes. There's a girl on TikTok who is like medical coding from Memphis or something like that from Memphis, Tennessee. She caught my eye because I'm from Memphis, Tennessee too. And she was talking about do you have to buy books every year on her TikTok today? And she's coding from home, but she's still using a 2021 book or something. Um, she hasn't upgraded her books. <laughs> But she uses it every day. It's faster than looking it up on an online program or online Google sometimes. Um, she's just obviously not using it for the E&M section. She's just using it for the codes in the back of the book. Um, you know, cardiology, integumentary, all the way through to radiology. So the paper books are helpful, but you do need to learn how to use the online programs that they have um, in looking up codes too. So that's where uh, Practicode comes in and helpful. How do you find the levels of e and &M? Is that what you're talking about? Answer C. Good job. What about this one? 381 15 is down twice, 38115, I would go to that one first because it is down twice. They want to know if you know if you can add another code to it or not, 38111. <sighs> I still feel bad I didn't have a chance to prep questions, but it was a crazy day. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Are we doing that? Did we do that? Would we add another code with it? Julie says this question was on her exam. I will copy it.
This one or the one before it? Oh, there's Travis. I hear the slider door going off now. A? Everybody going A? Perfect. Good job. All right, we've got a massive gastric dilation dysphagia. They had an EGD with a catheter placement. So, let's look at our answers. We've got two of them in the 40s. 4, 3, 2, 41, and 46. We'd we'll look at those first, maybe the 35. Make sure I'm under EGD. Thanks for that info, Julie. That's super helpful. 4, 3, 2. Especially for Sunday's workshop, too. Four, three, two. If you're worried and want to know how to do different levels of e &M, I have a new membership on my website that has an e &M page full of e &M downloads. It's not my notes, but they're more like, how do you get the level for problem list? How do you get the level of data? How many points do you get for an x-ray? How many points do you get for a lab work? How do you add those together to get moderate, low, straightforward, those kind of things? And then how do you do a total for risk adjustment, same thing. You'll have points, and then you can add them together and see if you're straightforward, moderate, low, complex, those kind of things. Tons and tons of E&M downloads, plus lots of practice exam questions, all on how to do your E&M levels without knowing the time or the MDM just a ton of practice exam questions, so hopefully that will help. And I hope to start tutoring again once I retire from my job and the kids go back to school sometime in September. So I'll have one-on-one -on -one tutoring back up around that time this year. Oh, Julie's spilling the tea. I wish I could stay and play, but I have to go to bed. Lots of love, Kelly. Bless your heart. Congratulations. Wonderful, wonderful. My classmate said on her test, it asked about, okay, an avulsion. Let me see. Let me see if I have a question about that somewhere. I think I've seen that word before.
one one no one five five seven four if a patient sustained an avulsion injury to the left index finger and underwent formation of a direct pectile graft of the left middle finger, the answer would be 15574. That might be an area to look into for the exam. What did you guys get for the answer for this one? Kelly, thank you so much for the super chat. You are awesome. Aww. So sweet of her. That is so great. Thank you so Kelly, much. Kelly, she donated $2 through super chat. For the support. That's awesome. Every little bit helps. Let's give out another membership. Because Kelly paid for half of this one, and I'll pay for the other half. Yay! And this one is from Kelly. Angela, Angela, Angela just won a YouTube membership because of Kelly's donation. Thank you so much. Oh Lord, Estella is thinking about signing up for an AAPC course. What's your thought? Don't I don't think you'll be happy. If you have the money and the time to blow, then great. If somebody's going to pay for it for you, if you can get it free from a state um, assistance program, then wonderful. If it's not, if you're going to pay money for it, don't do it. All you need is the study guide. It's a hundred dollars. That's worth more than the course. Everything that's inside their study guide is in the course. The course just has it in PDF form or video form that's monotonous and you won't like it. Get the study guide. It's just as good, if not better. It's a lot of information in that study guide and it more than does the job that the course does. Promise, promise, promise. I'm not lying. Just buy the study guide. Buy the practice exam questions, exams A, B, C, D, E, and F, the study guide, and then watch my lives and do all these practice questions with me and prep your book. Prep your CPT book, especially in your ICD-10 book, and you're going to be just fine. And I have all the steps on how to do the book prep on my website for free under the Resources tab. That's all you need, I promise. You got the study guide. Great. Page one, open it up. And you know it starts out with the business of medicine and it starts out with the different parts of Medicare, part A, part B, part C, part D, what's in each one, what pays for it. Then it goes into the NCC, I edits. That's perfect. That's exactly what's on the exam is what's in that study guide. Promise. It is a ton of information. Let me see what's on chapter three. Oh, where's my study guide? Oh, underneath a ton of books. Let's see, chapter three is Introduction to ICD-10, right? Is that what's the, um, what your, your says? And the main thing about that is, um, all you got to do for that is know where in your ICD-10 book 
to find all the different little symbols. What does NOS mean? What does, what page does that start on? Page 35, page 35. You don't need to, you know, You don't need to worry about the tabular list. Um, you need to know where to find the brackets, the parentheses, excludes one and excludes two definitions in your ICD-10 book. Be sure you know where to find all these little symbols. Super helpful. Be sure you know how to turn to those really quickly. Um, bye, Mommy. I love you. What do you mean, bye? I'm going. Where are you going? Why? Because she's taking me to get my hair trimmed. That's on Saturday. Yeah, on Saturday. Today's Thursday. Let me give my child a hug. I'll be right back, guys. I'm sorry. What? You're leaving on a Thursday when you're getting a haircut on a Saturday. What's the note for? Uh -huh. I made JV team. I made JV. Yes. Varsity. You're not gonna get on varsity. You're not a high school senior, dude. Quit being mean about it. Next You can't take an eleventh grader's spot on the cheer squad. Who do you think you are, Kareem Abdul Jabbar? Huh? My love, my love, my love, my love. There's no way. Kendall made captain and one of my other friends made captain. Kendall made captain of the JV team? Yeah. Your best friend made the captain of the JV team and you're not happy? I know. What? I'm mad because I didn't hit my toe touch and I didn't hit my back tuck. When? When? So Travis, just think about it this way, okay? You've never done comp competition before, right? Either. And when you hit good on varsity, there, mm. that's massive. <laughs> that's my mm. inheritance you we'll keep taking from my mother, <laughs> Travis. It's too many. You know I don't allow that too many. Look at this. Okay, Stop. so you've never done competition before. And varsity is, is My students are on. Please walk away, okay? Y'all can talk about all this. Since you're taking him away, you can talk about it later. Goodbye. Uh-uh. No, it's too tight and too many. I don't like that. He can wear two at a time. Not all of this mess. You're not Deep wearing all of this. Take him till tomorrow. No, he's fine. If he wants to go, he's going to go. I was um, just and you. I'm with students, and i got to prep for my workshop tomorrow. for Sunday. Oh. Sunday. Sunday. That's more than enough. You don't need any more on than that. You got enough food to feed Travis? Huh? Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah, I, okay. I, I, for not sure after the weekend I have enough food to feed everybody else. Okay. But the way you respect that, I need mean, I mean, meds. I don't have his med bottle. You need to bring me his med bed thing. Okay. Here's mine. You, I need his med. I have it in the house. I'm yes, sorry. bring it here and I'll fill it up. Okay, I'll bring it by tomorrow. Yep, yep, yep. I'll be here. Anytime. Love, Love you. Be good. He did make the cheer squad. He just made junior varsity squad, and he he's in he's in ninth grade. He he's in ninth grade. He thinks he can be on the eleventh grade and twelfth grade team where they're varsity. I guess is what they're called. Anyway, so silly. And his best friend made captain, so it's awesome. <laughs> Hi, Travis. Yes, he's going over to. Um, one of the cheer squads home and they are going to practice tonight and tomorrow and then sun Saturday get the haircut all right discord yes what did you guys think was the answer see we got the 52 we're gonna put 52 on this could not engage due to high grade narrowing 
Oh, it was A. Did anybody get that one right? Let's go see. So for the ICD-10, all you need to know is to find all the body parts. Um, all that. All the body parts. The rest of the stuff about the ice, the guidelines, dominant, yes, which hand, which side of the body is dominant when it's not documented. I've seen that question sometimes on the exam, but not in a while. Just be sure to know where to find the stuff. The adverse effects, poisoning, underdosing. Toxicity effects. Yep, yep, yep. Usually on there. Ooh, there's your question about the NCCI edits. It's at the end of this chapter. Um, that is actually inside here in the study guide. At the end of chapter with the ICD 10s. Hold on. Delete, delete, delete. My brain is going 900 to nothing. Yes, I want to delete. And yes, we want to add video. Add. Add. See, in the study guide at the end of chapter three is that NCCI edit credit little chart thing. Um, and it's telling you about the 11042 has. A one allowed. Yep, yep, yep. Super cool. <laughs> we are Team Travis. Huh. <laughs> Several of us did say answer A. Good job. Good job, guys. Sorry I wasn't there to help you out to look for it. All right. When can a physician report a scope removal for one or more loose foreign bodies? If it's, they got to be a certain size, or when they're certain cannulas, or if they're smaller than a certain size, or if there's no restrictions on removals at all. What do you guys think? Aw, we were particularly impressed with you. Your talent and enthusiasm will be a valuable asset, asset to the team. <laughs> That's so cute. Aw, I tried out for the cheer squad when I was in high school and did not get on. <laughs> Everybody saying B? Perfect. What about these medicine codes in the back of the book? We've got two of them with the same answer, the 70. Would we times it by 11 or would it be by itself? 
does it have each in the descriptor? It's the first thing I'd run to go look for. 909. Seventy patient twenty years or older. It's a child code. You can't do anything with it. You've got to go find its parent code. What is its parent code? Anybody know? Can you type it in chat? Perfect job, Patrice, my Texas friend. Indeed, that is the parent code 90967. It does not have the word each in the descriptor, but what does it have in it? What's another set of words that are the same thing as each? If you see it in a code descriptor, then that usually means that you can times it. You should highlight that. And then document that underneath the code descriptor to say times if it says per day. Indeed. Good job. Looks like we have a different answer for every single one of them, but they're all super close together. So start with the first one in numerical order. It's probably a difference between the 13 and the 16, but since they're all so close, I would start out with 93600 and see what's going on over here. Nine three six. Oh, oh. Do you see the modifier alert right above this code? Be sure you have that marked. We are not allowed to use the modifier 51 with these codes, and we don't need to use certain codes with other codes super helpful to make sure you have those noted. Some of these are intra, some of them are right. Some of them are aorta, some of them are ventricular. Those are the things that I highlight in these codes. If it's intra aorta, it's got a red circle around it. If it's right ventricular, it's blue. Intra has its own color code, just like extra does in infra. This one is intra, is what we did do, so we need to make sure we have that matching. Which of the codes would be reportable with the 51 modifier?
Easy peasy, right? Very good question. Left breast mass. This 81 and 83 will be on your medical coding exam. For sure, for sure. All the practice exam questions that you can find with this 19081 and 83 in them, the more the better that you can practice because you can learn what to look for inside here by the more you practice. Stereo is something to highlight when you're in these questions. Also, clips, dyes, seeds are all things to find in these questions. So the type of guidance and if they put any clips, seeds, dyes, D-Y-E, those kinds of things are what you need to look for. Sometimes the procedure is listed wrong, but what they did is something different, just so you know. Usually in the COC questions, not in CPC, but just be careful. The main important thing is you're going to be looking for guidance and whether they used any seeds or markers or anything. Clips. Anyone else want to try? We got. Yep, everybody. I made that too easy finding those clips for you, didn't I? <laughs> Good job. All right. These codes, what's, what's the main important distinction between these codes? What's the only thing you're going to look for in this patient's question because of where these codes are at and what header they're under? What's the one thing? The 99460, the 99471, 99291, and 99468 all have one thing in common that you're going to look for. Perfect Marshall. It is age, patient age, and there's only one code that will do a 20 day older, right? So that ought to tell you what the answer is, really. You're very welcome. What do you guys think the answer is? If it's just based off age, which code can it only be? Perfect. Good job. Don't make it more difficult. You don't even have to open your book for these. If you know that about these codes, that they're all age-based, do just fine. The header for A is admit hospital. The header for B is ER. The header for C is ER. And the header for D is admit. So now all you have to do is find your patient's status. Are they in the ER? And were they discharged? Or are they in the hospital? If they're still in the hospital, what level are they? Straightforward, nurse visit, or did they see an MD? If they're still in the ER, are they circling the drain and dying? 
at an 85? Or are they mildly complex? You do have an MDM noted. Which answer would go with low MDM? They may have this question wrong, too, by the way. As I'm looking at it, it might be incorrect. I may have to write them a note. But we'll see. Because our 99221 is no longer a... Right? Isn't that just a nurse visit now? Or no, it's our 81. It's our 81 that's a nurse visit. No, this is right. 221E is admin hospital. That one's still correct at low and straightforward. So we're okay. All right. We're okay. Our ER 81 is now a nurse visit. So make sure they don't mess up on that one. We got A's and C's. His primary care physician came to the ER and admitted the patient to the hospital. And they did it as a low level MDM. So A is correct. No ER. 84 in the ER is moderate and 85 is high so you know if you've got MDM noted you won't be billing anything moderate or high for sure we've got the 42 listed twice one of them just has radiology with it same thing for 41 so we just need to check out these codes see if they already have radiology included and then see which one is the correct answer so 453 453 41 it's a child code so is 42 A. Patrice is on fire. She means business. Your next attempt at taking this exam, <laughs> you're, I think you're done, right? You're, you're like, I'm doing it one more time and I'm done, right? We've got three answers. Now, all four answers have the 49411 in it. Only two of the answers throw in a cardiovascular or respiratory one at the 32553 code. All of them have the radiology code in it and I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't worry about the 11. One of them does throw a 12 in also or the 32553. route into the body will be important
if, oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Do I have a camera? I do have a camera, but it is dead again. I don't know why it does this. Let me see, does my ending camera, does it have a camera? No. This one, does the other one have a camera? Why it keeps doing that, but anyway. Um, video. If you have my notes, oh, it died again. So frustrating. Nope. Where's the video? There we go. Video, video. What does my note say there? For some reason, my note says no prostate. There's a parenthetical, three down, underneath the report supply. Underneath the imaging, it says for percutaneous. Are we intrathoracic though? I don't know. It says use. Ooh, camera is not happy. Okay. You can stop making that noise now. <laughs> There's a parenthetical three down that says for percutaneous placement, but that's intrathoracic. It says to use 32553. Did they go through the chest? <laughs> 10 days till you take your exam. Hey, Nicole, good to see you. You're working in pocket prep too? Awesome. I ran out of time today uh, working real jobs, so I didn't have time to prep any questions for tonight. These are questions I have not done yet in um, pocket prep because they added 250 more. So I figured we'd go through these. Good to see you. But the 49411 is okay for the pancreas, just not the prostate. Ah, okay. That makes more sense. I got my P's mixed up. I got my dyslexia with body parts. Prostate versus pancreas. I'm like the 49411 is in every single answer. Has to be there. If it said prostate, it would definitely change the answer and none of them would be correct. Uh, 49412 is for an open procedure. We didn't do an open procedure. I don't think 12 would be included. B, the smallest amount of codes able to bill, there's only two here, where every other answer has three, the one that looks different from all the rest. Keep that in mind. It's also the cheapest. 
we don't need to throw in the 12 because it's definitely not an open procedure. 12 is where we cut open the body and we can look inside the body and put these seeds in there. And it definitely told us that we were doing this procedure percutaneously. We're just sliding them underneath the skin. And all we needed to do was add our guidance. So just two codes. That's all. We definitely don't need the three, two, five, five, three because we were not doing the prostate. If we were doing the prostate, we need to go somewhere else, I think. Congenital. Usually the CPT codes that are dealing with congenital problems are one of the higher number codes, like if our answer starts off with 20, it's probably the 27, I don't know. Just a pattern I see in the uh, CPT book is congenital is usually one of the last things because we do diagnostic first, then we do therapeutic stuff, and then we get the born with this issue repairs. So just, I don't know if it's true for this question, but just something to think about is what's going on in my head as I'm looking at this question. 44120 is down twice. Definitely going to run to that first. This code was on somebody's exam recently, so was the 44126. Thanks, Nicole. What do you guys think is the answer for this one? I can see that our 44110 says that that one is not requiring this, but ours is and that leads you to the 20. If we're doing the 420, it says 420 is for a single resection. Well, we had four resections. To do four resections, we have to add the 21. And the 21 to add and make four resections would end up being the times three for the 21 right? Our last thing to remember is that yes we're congenital and that's where they get you is you think you're gonna be B but don't forget we needed to look for the congenital and that's where our 26 is located then you gotta do it again this is for your single then if we're gonna add the tapering and each resection, we're going to need what? Ooh, we're not going to do the 26. We're going to actually do the 27 and then do the 28 for each resection in asthmatasis. So it's actually A. Good job, Marissa and Ada. Good job. Yes, yes, yes. Just remember the congenital is usually the one of the most expensive things to do because you can see that it started off with 
not requiring the A word, and then it moves on to the A word, and then it's doing it all over again with congenital. And then throw you some loops for all the singles and tapering, and then the each at the end. Craziness. Drowning and getting a pulse. You know we're probably critical care, maybe. Um, we got 30 minutes of critical care. We've got intubation, blood gas, and central catheter placement. Is he on the phone or talking to EMS? Nope, was brought into the ER. Okay. What would we bill? Yes, it was a very tricky one. You really had to pay attention to those tiny little details. I have under 44126 in bold congenital. That way I remember it. Under 44120, I have requiring anesthesia. And 44110, no anesthesia. I don't know why I put anesthesia. I think I meant to do anno. The, the one where they cut out part of it and then they do the stitches in the circle. The anomastasis, I can't say that one. Never have been able to say that word. I don't know why I put anesthesia. I get so used to saying or writing the same A word all the time. Be careful, Patrice. You might be correct, but I'm questioning the 30 minutes because if we're going to bill for anything at all to go with critical care, we have to take the time off of critical care for doing that procedure because we're going to bill for that procedure. And every single one of these answers has something being billed with it, meaning I can't double bill the time to do the procedure and still consider that to be critical care time. You would have had to take in five minutes off for intubation, five minutes off if the doctor's doing the blood gas, and five minutes off for the doctor to do the central venous catheter <coughs> if you're billing for all of that. So that's 15 minutes off of critical care time. And if you don't have 30 minutes of critical care time, then you can't bill for critical care. So what does that leave you to bill? Where was your patient? Any time you see critical care as a possible answer and the time was strictly at 30 minutes, be very careful about billing critical care because that's the cutoff line, right? Anything less than 30 minutes, you have to use the appropriate ENM code. It's on that chart. If you're in the 2023 book, it's on page 22. It's a guideline and they're just testing you to see if you understood that guideline. And there's one tiny little sentence. Oh.
I'm not sure if I can find it right now. These guidelines are not written in any kind of order at all. I think it's actually probably not here, which makes it very, very difficult. Um, it would be nice if it was here, but I think they have it actually moved. The guideline isn't here, but it's over in the NICU critical care, which is why I can never find it. Around page 41 and 42, if you're in the 2022 or 2023, I mean. Um, there's something in here written about taking the time off if you're going to bill for any of these. Then you take the time off. Maybe it's on page 43 under the inpatient pediatric and NICU because it's got those codes listed there. It's such a pain to find. But anyway, they're wrong right here um, with this question. So don't think that that's the correct answer. <sighs> I have to get them to fix this question because it's incorrect. If you're going to build this, you've got to take the time off. I know I have it marked in my E&M for the 2024 because when they rewrote these critical care codes, they added more info and clarity into it in the 2024 book. Two ninety one, two ninety Vascular access procedures three 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 six five five not reportable. Does the question say it was the physician already subtracted? Okay, so I didn't see that part. That's my fault. You see how they said in the question that they already subtracted the time for the billable services? I didn't notice that sentence, so that's my fault. B is correct. If they don't have this sentence in it, then you do have to subtract for the billable services. So that's my fault. My fault. But where is that guideline in this book? Book, 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 book. I know it's here somewhere because I marked it. And I was happy to have found it. One of these days I'm going to put a marker on it. Okay. 46 of the E&M book, 2024 though, second column, first paragraph, other procedures performed as necessary as part of resuscitation, like 31500, may be reported separately when performed as part of pre-admission. Um, 
In order to report these procedures separately, they must be performed as a necessary component of resuscitation and not simply a convenience before admission, blah, 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 and you have to take the time off for the billable services. Oh. I know that sentence is here. The last sentence in that paragraph where it starts off any services performed that are not included in these listings may be reported separately for initiation of selected head-to-toe hypothermia is not helpful. That's not helpful. That's not helpful. Any services performed which are not listed above may be reported separately. Anyway. I'll eventually find it. Yeah, I'll work on this one while I keep looking. Three, six, two, three, fifty, and sixty-two and sixty-five. Sixty-two is on both of those, A and B. I'd look hard there first, see if I'm under intra and make sure you're under a drug delivery system. And you need to know if it's programmable or non and how it's delivered. Not much of a discussion when I'm just flitting around. <laughs> Miss Twinkle and can't find my stuff. Where is it? I know what's here somewhere. Per day, per admission. question on my CPMA exam about time for transporting patients. The control physician non-face-to-face -face time begins when the first contact by the control physician with the specialized transportation team and ends when the patient's care is handed over to the receiving facility team. I had that question. Some doc on a phone in a car stuck in traffic that he was directing the EMS to the hospital. That's a good one. teacher told me years ago to stop changing my answers. That's so funny. Page 25, bottom left. Yeah, they're talking about it then, but I wanted to say that if you're going to add other services, you have to take the time off. Do you see that? It used only once per date when the time. 
by the individual continuous day critical care less than 30 minutes. Yeah, use the ENM code, but time spent on activities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time spent performing separate reportable. That's it. Time spent re performing separately reportable procedures or services should not be included in the time for critical care. That's what I was looking for. I don't even have it underlined in my notes. Such a pain. I knew I found it at one point. Such an obscure little sentence. And again, it's one of the last sentences in a paragraph. It's always the last sentence in the paragraph, not the first sentence. Thank you, Maisha. Time spent performing separate reportable procedures, which means like those trachs and stuff that are on that page um, in the NICU page. They're on page 46 and 47. Any of those? You got to take the time off. Now, do they tell you how much time to take off? No. But if your question starts out with 30 minutes, and even if you got to take one minute off per CPT code, then that's still going to put you at 29 minutes to do one trach of critical care, and you still can't build critical care anyway. So whether it's one minute or five minutes, it still means you can't build critical care. Which answer do you guys think it's this one for B? We're going to have our 58 modifier. 58 modifier is for a staged procedure. This one's staged from six weeks ago. Cool beans. Good job. How does a cardiac magnetic imaging differ from traditional magnetic imaging? Static imaging, psychological evaluation, contrast material, or more pharmacological stress. How about pharmacological instead of psych? Hmm. Can only, cannot provide uses. Where would you find the answer for this one, too? How many of I have still have on? Only 28 of you. And we got 29, 39 likes. That's cool. And $2 from chat. That is so cute. Cute, cute, cute. I know it's getting late. We got uh, seven more minutes or so. C. B. The ability to provide an evaluation of cardiac function, physiological. I think that sentence is in the radiology section. They're saying in the 2023 book, it's around page 535. What was that? Maisha gifted a, a membership to someone. Who won? Mary? Aw, congratulations, Mary, and thank you so much. 
for the gift of the subscription to somebody. That's such great, helpful, helpful little community we got here. We've got two of the answers, B and C, that go with um, 69436. Let's go look up that code real quick. You guys are so awesome. Thank you so much. I know that subscription is going to really help Mary and make a difference, you know. She's going to be able to see individual book prep videos, all my old workshops, the duck classes, listen to the podcast now. I hope it helps out a whole bunch, Mary. 694. We're in the ears. These codes were on somebody's exam. Well, at least the 21, 24, 33, and 36 were. 36 is a tin pan. When the surgery is a my ring, it starts off with M Y R I N. That means tubes are already placed in the ears. Tin pan means we're placing tubes in the ears today, which is kind of cool to know those differences. What do you guys think the answer is for this one? Yeah, it'll be in the radiology section. Good job, go kart. Yep, yep. Which diagnosis are we going for? The 90 or the 33? What do you guys think? I know it's late there in Texas. What time is it there? At not 10, 10.30 or 11.30? How late is it there? My rings equals tubes. Correct, go-kart. Tim Pan means we're going to be placing tubes Mabel's going with B. 33. Good job. Perfect. A lot of times the 90s are non specific, so I was leaning that way too. Are we a new patient in the front of the book, or are we medicine codes in the back of the book? Where are we going to be? We have an emotionally distressed patient. I know there's some sort of question about uh, a medically or emotionally upset person on the exam somewhere. Where am I at? What am I looking at? An adult crisis? Um. There's of course going to be a difference between my ring and Tim Pan on the exam. Don't forget about the lab modifiers like QW, something like that. Um, Worthon's tumor.
Leo Waver, QW. Some of this stuff. I just put it in chat. Let's see. Are you going to build two codes versus one? Would we build two? Indeed. Good job. In Tignitary, are we a simple 12014 or are we a 1253? What coding scenario looks appropriate? Would we have the 51 modifier? Did we do three procedures, two procedures, three procedures, or four? If you're billing a 9920 or 1 anything, any E&M codes, be sure to not charge for Steri strips um, because that's included in your office visit code. One of those little tricky guidelines that they sometimes bring up on the exam is um, don't bill for Band-Aids, adhesive strips, Steri strips, anything to close a wound with strips. Don't bill for that if you're billing a 99 office visit. Something to watch out for. But what do you guys think is the answer for this question? Did everybody see QW, CLIA waiver? I've got a vocabulary term, two of them, in chat. Those are very helpful to make sure you know them on the exam. B, good job. Perfect. Last one, and we'll go for tonight. We've got Q listed, so is this congenital? Q things are usually congenital. Ooh, we do have congenital. So that helps me out, right? So are we a 41 or a 61? I like memorizing that diagnosis codes that are congenital are in the Qs. That's super helpful. Patrice, is that A for this question? You already done this one? Five six four four one versus a five seven zero oh, six one. Estella. If I get some codes together, what? It disappeared on me. I didn't see it. Um. I saw something, but I don't know what happened to it. It may have disappeared or. But whatever it is, yes, <laughs> I'm sure I can. You can email me at medical coding by Jen at gmail.com. And Estella, I can help out. Whatever you needed. If you have any practice exam questions, you don't understand why the answer is what it is, send them and I can do them in the live or in a video for you. Aisha says A2. Good. Cool. Don't forget Pocket Prep is a great resource. Um, it's not too expensive either. 15 bucks gives you access to all the questions. 
If you don't know how to use Pocket Prep, it's really kind of cool. Um, let me end this quiz. And if this is your dashboard, uh, when you do purchase into it, you can do the question of the day, of course. You can build your own exam. Just do the missed questions. You can do a quick 10 of them. You can do timed. You can just do your weakest subject. I like to go to the build. I don't know. I haven't logged on in a while, so it may not build. Oh, there it goes. Yep, 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 yep. And then... Um, you can drop down menu and you can get rid of this and you can build them like I only want to do compliance regulatory guidelines and E&M and then you can pick how many questions you want to do like all of them 120 of them that are all just those areas and then hit start your quiz which is super fun to do <laughs> If you wanted to, sorry, my mine is being silly for some reason, but that's super helpful. You can also up at the very, very top, and I don't think you could see it for some reason, but here above the good evening, there's three tabs. One says study, one says stat, that's your stats to see how well you do, and then review is the last tab and see how it shows you all the questions you can look at all 500 of them all at one time if you wanted to I don't know why it doesn't do all 750 but there's 500 of them right here and you can actually see the question and the rationale to all of them um, and go down through them if you wanted to um, and it just keeps going all the way down through all 500 right here and it keeps them all the question and the rationale on all on one page so I like their interface it's pretty easy you can download a phone app and have it on your phone too um, and as long as you are up near the 90 percentile range you are great don't I don't like the 70 average and then you think you're ready for the exam, I'd rather you closer to 90. <laughs> um, and keep in mind, um, there's only three hit picks questions on the exam. So you don't really need to do all 46 of these because that's a lot when you only have three questions on the exam. Do the compliance and regulatory um, of course, your guidelines and the E&M and then the new cases. They have a bunch of cases too. I haven't even done any of them yet. So, um, super, super cool interface. And this is the study part. Um, we do have a link on my website at medicalcoding.gen. If you do use the link, it'll fly by here in just a minute, the pink one. Yep, that pink one that just flew by, or it's right here on the side with the pocket prep yellow thing right there. Then um, they'll send me $5 if you do purchase the one here on medical, and then you go to the top one, which is AAPC. Super cute. Um, their prices aren't bad at all, and if you do buy the three months for 40 bucks um, you have a pass guarantee which is super cool they also have if you haven't noticed you can go down here to financial support and they do have a scholarship page that you can apply for and request a free three months membership super cool and then they also have a page that's giving back, which is really nice. They um, have a racial equality scholarship page. So it's really cool. They, they've given away um, and paid for uh, 15 scholarships for people to have completely free um, 
other stuff that's really cool um, in the community. They also do some other um, volunteering and building other spaces uh, for other people. So it's really kind of cool. I like them. Um, I think they're going to put my site on their site at some time soon. They also have, um, um, if you decide to do nursing school, they do have some of their nursing um, degrees and questions here too. But I like their AAPC questions for sure. And uh, don't forget on my website now, under the resources tab, You've got the CPT book prep page. It's completely free, plus the videos that'll show you how to work up your book. If you want to join our Discord group, click the FAQ page, and then this will tell you how to create your own Discord account, and then you can log on to our free Discord group. Super helpful. Don't forget to stop by my uh, best list of free resources page, too, that's here. There is um, a scholarship for AAPC here, the pocket prep grant, also um, the free monthly magazine questions from AAPC are here. Um, they come with rationale too. There's also the free CMS certification classes from CMS that are here. Super cool list. They have um, the world of Medicare, you can be certified in that in 60 minutes. They have all the different Medicare claims forms if you want to get certified in that. The, they have a 60 minute course in diagnosis codes and using the ICD-10 book. Really cool. They even have one for the PCS and you can be certified in that. And this stuff you just add to your resume. Um, the one that I'm required to do every year is combating Medicare fraud and abuse with my employer. I have to do that one and this one, Medicare fraud and abuse. Um, SNF is a uh, nursing home, um, skilled nursing facilities. They even have two for uh, appeals, appeals and grievances. A lot of medical groups hire people to do appeals and grievances for them. You could be certified in that, and that's a brand new course that was just released too. So, and it's just an hour long, super cool, and it's all free for you guys. And you get that list on my website. Um, don't forget that the shared gallery is full of free information too. It's all my favorite pictures. How do I get rid of my apprenticeship? What's my favorite? You know, whatever's tons of free stuff there. Um, the practice area is free. The blog is free. I have employment and coding blogs here. Tons of help. Tons of practice exam questions here for free on the free thing. And now even the bonus membership stuff where the there is like a ton of free stuff here on the E&M thing. This side of that page is covered in um, E and M PDFs you can download. Plus, it has a lot of practice exam questions. Same thing for integumentary and cardiovascular. I guess I'm not logged on. I bought my own membership, but I guess I'm not logged on to the right email account here for right now. But. Um, Anyway, super helpful and um, additional educators. So if there's anybody that I should add to this list, be sure and let me know. But we've got some other educators. Once you become really, really good at coding, don't forget to stop by and um, see this lady at the Coding Guild. She's super smart. She's way smarter than me and she knows a lot about medical coding. She even has some free exams on her website. Rant and Randy is really good for a beginner CPC or CCS and he's offered to tutor if anybody needs tutoring help. Um, this lady is... Why did it go to that? 
Unlock Your Potential. This is her. This is the Coding Guild lady. She has some, she's super smart. Woo, she's super smart. She knows the advanced stuff from um, medical coding past CPC. If you want to do CIC, she's the person. Look how many certifications she has, not only from AHEMA, but also from AAPC. She has all of them. <laughs> From billing to everything. She's crazy. We've talked quite a bit um, from time to time. And she used to have a practice exam to hear really advanced stuff. But um, if you want to go beyond me and do a bunch of stuff, she's your lady. She's cool. But if there's anybody I should add here, be sure and let me know. I hope this was super helpful. Don't forget about uh, Sunday, 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 because we're going to have a free workshop. And I'm going to go over 75 questions about that could possibly be on your medical coding certification exam. The link is already up and it's going to be right here 2 o'clock on Sunday. It's my birthday so I hope you guys can come hang out with me on my birthday and we'll do three hours, 75 questions and three hours. Same pace as the exam. Bring all three of your books. Work on your muscle memory and trying to get to the codes as fast as I do and knowing where you can find the answers and um, it'll really give you a good workout <laughs> to uh, let you know what you're going to face during your exam except for you won't have the stress of going through your books making sure your testing place is correct and your camera view and all that stuff you won't have that stress but um, the link is already up and I hope to see you guys then. I added a bunch of videos to our um, playlist and our podcast and our membership that wasn't in there correctly the last couple of days. It wasn't picked right wherever it was at. It was kind of stuck in limbo. It was under members, members only, but I didn't have a, pers a, a level picked. It was just in a generic, unpicked level. So I fixed all of those. So added a bunch more um, workshops and duck classes to those playlists. So if you haven't gone through those workshop or the duck class playlist in a while, um, you may see some new workshops and duck classes that weren't in there before. So I hope that is super helpful. And I'll see you guys on Sunday. Any other questions before we go? You use pocket prep at work on your break. Aww. To gather, to look at them, my job, I get a lot of claim rejections for component codes which have modifiers to override. I'm just curious if we should be coding another code. Probably, remember this exam on the CPC exam takes no insurance information into account for guidelines. It's only the guidelines that are inside your CPT and ICD-10 and hip book, really. Um, they do a little tiny bit about Medicare and using those HIPPIX codes instead of a CPT code, but that's really it. They don't take any insurance information in, into account when they're creating these exam questions, and that's why people that are in the system and have been working with claims and billing have a really hard time passing this exam because they've got their work history in their head and they're answering the questions based off work history and what they would do on the job and that's not how you need to answer these questions so if there's anything I need to look at you can send it to me on the email
Karma. First time here. What is the name of the study guide? The study guide is just the AAPC study guide. Let me see if I can't add video capture device. Yep. It's just this one. Just the AAPC official study guide. I have an old one, of course, but it's still page for page the exact same. They may have updated just a few things for the ENM guidelines, but it is stocked full of everything you need. There's your first question <laughs> that's going to be on the exam. The high tech question was on the exam back in the day. It's just back to back tons of exactly what they want to test you on for sure. It's a really good book. Really good book. Those are just the symbols, the brackets, the parentheses. Excludes one, excludes two. It's their entire course in a little book. In the ICD-10 book, what do the arrows mean? What does the hashtag mean? What does the star mean? You know, whatever in the CPT book. Super concentrated, just full of tons of information and exactly what they're going to test you on if you're taking an AAPC exam, for sure. It's perfect. If you can get it in electronic format and then have VitaSource read it out loud to you, that's an excellent way to um, do this study guide too because you can have it playing openly and listening to it. I like listening to audiobooks than I do reading them. I comprehend better listening than I do reading. Reading has not been my forte um, my whole life. But listening and doing is great. Reading and turning it into knowledge is harder for me. Great, Estella. I hope I can help you. Awesome. You got the 2024 version. Awesome. Great. All right, guys. I'm going to get off here and go check on my mom. I'll see you guys on Sunday. Proud of you guys. Love you guys. And uh, best of luck. Best of luck. I hope I helped. I just really hope I can make a difference. Pop into Discord if y'all need help between now and Sunday.